This is a laser. And this is an America's capote. Can you spot any difference? But now I ask myself, is it possible to transform this little sailing dinghy into a foiling one by just adding some wings? Well, let's find out. Simplifying to the max, if you take a boat that normally stays in the water, it feels a resistance due to the pressure distribution of the wave and the friction of the surface with water. If you put a wing beneath the boat, it lifts the boat out of the water and this decreases drag and increase, should increase speed. And so how can I design this wing? I don't want to bore you, but we need to consider the equilibrium. We can start from the longitudinal equilibrium. So considering the weight of the boat, the weight of the mast, the weight of the sailor that can change. In this way, we can find the lift of the centerboard and the lift of the rudder, and they may also change. From the previous system, we need to solve the transversal equilibrium. Here you can see the difference between a normal displacing boat and a foiling one. In the displacing hull there is an orange force, that is the Archimedes force, that tends to restore the equilibrium of the boat, and this is due to the displacement of the hull that changes its center. In a T-foiling boat this restoring force is totally lost, and the only force that keeps in equilibrium the boat is the weight of the sailor and the sail side force. From this beautiful plot that is the polar of the sail, it is possible to evaluate the lift and drag coefficient of the sail in each functioning point varying apparent wind angle. In this point the sail works exactly like an airplane wing, providing lift and in this one instead it produces drag that can also be used as thrust in downwind courses. With this coefficient it is possible to compute the aerodynamical force of the sail with different wind conditions. This force can be split in lift and drag, as done in aerospace field, but I have more interest in thrust and side force so the force in the direction of the course of the boat and the force in the perpendicular direction. These forces will be of course balanced by hydrodynamical forces provided by daggerboard and rudder. If you proceed solving all these beautiful equilibrium equations, you can build a chart that gives you the equilibrium condition in function of the healing angle of the boat and the distance between the sailor and the center of the boat. From the equilibrium achieved, the area of the lifting surfaces can be evaluated and also the wing profiles can be chosen, both asymmetrical profile for the wings and symmetrical profile for rudder and daggerboard. But in practice, what are the pieces to build? The main lifting force is guaranteed by the main foil that is placed below the daggerboard. Also a foil in the rudder needs to be placed in order to control the pitch as the tail in an airplane. Both have to be controlled. The rudder foil is controlled by tilting the whole rudder and the male foil is controlled by tilting the whole foil. But in the next step, a flap will be used instead. This T-foil configuration is not stable. Its vertical equilibrium is neutral in the water. It needs a control system. There are some stable foil configuration as the V-foil. When speed increases, lift increases then the boat exits from the water, but also the immersed surface of the V-foil decreases, therefore the lift decreases, and this guarantees the vertical stability. The control system for the main wing works in this way. When the boat is in the water, this wand tends to follow the water surface. It pulls this wire that pushes this rod into the foil, increasing its angle of attack, and therefore the lift. When the boat is high in the water, the wand drops, loosening the wire and therefore decreasing lift and so the height of the boat. Now that we have the basis of the theory, it is possible to proceed building the prototype. But hey, have you considered subscribing? It's free, come on, you can do it. The structure of the wing is made out of a sandwich composite of carbon fiber skins and a U wood core. Started by building the wood core that are shaped using a 3D printed mask to replicate the wing profile both for symmetrical and asymmetrical profile. Then I repeated the process for both foils and daggerboard. The daggerboard profile is then cut and shaped. When the daggerboard shape was ready, I milled a slot that will accommodate an aluminum tube for the control system. Inside it, a stainless steel rod will be positioned. Then some aluminum reinforcement were cut and prepared placed in the stressed part of the daggerboard. 
The top reinforces is loaded with almost all the vertical lift of the foil and the bottom reinforcement will take care of the torque applied by the wing. Here it comes the preparation of the lamination, starting with the vacuum bag, then proceeding applying the layers of unidirectional and bidirectional carbon fiber cloth. Two types of bidirectional cloth are used, 090 and plus or minus 45 degrees, that gives rigidity the first in orthogonal axis and the second in torsional stiffness. The peel ply is positioned, it is a permeable layer that helps to have a better surface finish on the composite and allows the resin to be absorbed by the breather that is another layer that absorbs the excess resin resulting in a lighter laminate. The vacuum is applied and therefore the atmospheric pressure compresses the vacuum bag reducing voids in the composite. Then the same procedure is done for the daggerboard and also for the main foil. A slot for the main foil is created with carbon and a mold inside. In this first try, the whole wing rotates. I'll do an next iteration with a flap built in the foil. Here you can see the first final result with the rudder and its foil, the center board, the main foil, the control system wand, and also the center board fittings. And finally the moment of truth, the first try. Everything fitted in place, just with a little help. And the moment was close. First test was hard, wind speed was poor, around 6-7 knots, and there was quite a rough sea. Therefore it was impossible to foil just by sailing, and a motorboat was used to tow the boat. Also, if the behavior of the boat in this case would change. As you can see, lateral stability was tricky. The boat was very hard to keep upright, but all at a sudden, it reached the critical speed. As you can hear, enthusiasm level was high but I was not completely happy. And so what was wrong? How could I improve the lateral stability of the laser? There were three main problems. The first one was that the control of the main foil was too flimsy. The second problem was that the takeoff speed was too high and that there was no lateral stability, as expected. The solution I found was to fix the wing and add the flap to have a smoother system. Then add a surface to the foil to lower takeoff speed and last to add some winglets. Winglets act like the dihedral angle in an airplane. Have you noticed that most of the planes have wings tilted upwards? This is because when an airplane rolls, it generates a side velocity called side slip velocity. If the wing line was straight, there would not be any effect. With a positive dihedral, the bottom wing has an higher angle of attack and therefore generates more lift than the upward wing, tending to restore equilibrium. Some military planes have an hydral wing plan, therefore unstable, to be faster in maneuvers, but they need advanced control system and skilled pilots. Next time when you'll see a seagull pointing you with an hydral wings, you'll know why and then you'll run. Then I proceeded cutting the foil to create the flap. and then the joint was made with a fiberglass hinge between the foil and the flap. Inside the hinge O, a wood spacer has been used to maintain the correct distance. Also this step was made in vacuum using peel ply and the breather layer. Now it was time to create the winglets using fiberglass and carbon and vacuum with a micro hole layer. This layer gives a smoother finish than the peel ply, reducing the finishing work afterwards. Before building this wing, I used a program that allowed me to compute lift and drag using potential method and considering the 3D wing. In this plot are represented lift and drag distribution, pressure distribution and downwash. 
In this other plot there is a representation of vertical force over angle of attack of the wing, varying the angle of the flap at the takeoff speed. And now here we go again, new try with a bigger wing. Now with a new pilot, and you can see here the setup. This time the sea was calm, but again there was not sufficient wind. However, the boat was way more stable, reaching longer flight times. Okay, maybe here we went too fast. Using a power boat to tug the laser created a working condition totally different from the normal sailing condition. First of all, the tug was not aligned with the sailing course, creating a huge stress in the winglets below. Then, the loss of the wind power reduced the lateral stability, increasing the difficulty to handle the boat. At last, the tug continued to pull the laser constantly, In this moment you can see the moment of the disaster. The rudder fell off, not broke, just the bolt was not tight. But the main foil torque broke the duck board in this point. This is due to the pull that was not aligned to the course and also that the duck board was not designed to manage the torque of the new foil. However, I think that errors are part of the game and probably I should have waited for the right windy day and not have used the power boat to pull the laser but come on, also the big one make errors. The important part is to start from there and continue trying. I repaired the dagger board and now I'm ready to try again, possibly with some wind. This project was then used for my master thesis in yacht design engineering and I was proud to graduate with something I made myself with a lot of help from my friends. If you are interested in this project, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment. You'll help me to support the channel. And then when reaching 10,000 subscribers, I'll do new tests.